tired and worn out Burned out on religion and life Afraid to let go again It's time you gave him everything Don't worry about tomorrow He said he'll give you more than enough Trust Jesus, he will never fail Walk with him, walk with him Love the unforced rhythms of grace Good morning, family. Greetings in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We trust that you are and blessed. We have commenced an in-person service again, and we are so excited to see all the families come back to the house of God. And we know there's a place for a corporate grace and a corporate anointing. And we want to encourage you, if you have not yet come back to the house of God, join in and God will bless you significantly. Now, this morning, we, I'm excited about the word. We are going to teach on understanding the anointing and I believe that as we understand the anointing and apply it effectively we will get supernatural outcomes in Jesus name close your eyes and bow your hearts and let us pray our gracious God and heavenly father as we bow in your presence this morning we are so grateful for your word we are so grateful for your promises we are so grateful for your heart as a loving heavenly father whose desire is to strengthen us bless us and show yourself strong on our behalf now God as we turn to your word we thank you that you declared that following the word, we will see signs, wonders and miracles. And so we're excited because the word releases revelation, knowledge, understanding and anointing. And Father, when that is manifested, signs, wonders and miracles follow the preached word. And so we are ready to receive the engrafted word of God that's able to build us up and give us a hope in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, family, this morning, my subject that I'm going to teach on this morning is understanding the anointing. Now, before we go into our teaching, let me, let's lay a foundation of the series that we're teaching, and then we'll go into this morning's teach. We have been led by the Spirit of God to teach on a fresh anointing to rebuild. And we thank God that we are coming out of the most challenging season that the world has ever faced. And as we are coming out of the season, God has positioned us for something significant. And so I want to encourage you as you prepare your hearts to receive from what God has. Understand that on, in, a, in a new season, God always has more. God desires always to promote you, to increase you, to, to, to release greater grace and greater anointing so that you could thrive on this new dimension that God has for you and so we've been teaching on uh, the anointing and we found there's two key components to the anointing there's the one component is the the oil the anointing oil but the second component that we found is a structure and the bible teaches in psalm 23 verses 5 thou anoint my head with oil my cup runneth over and so we see that that the oil needs a structure it needs a cup that that can contain that oil and so for the last five weeks we've been looking at many different scriptures we've been looking at principles on how we can build a spiritual structure and that spiritual structure that we build is so important because when we build it right we can contain the oil we can hold the oil that when we need 
to use it effectively, when we need to disperse it, when we need to apply it, when we need to confer it, we can see the outcomes immediately. And so we, we looked at the idea of building that structure and we taught extensively on it. We want to move forward this morning and we want to start looking now at the second component, which is the anointing oil. And that is so important for us to understand that God has dispersed, God has released anointing oil. David declares a fresh anointing God has released over our lives. And so this morning we want to start firstly by asking the question, do you understand the anointing? And so that's our subject, understanding the anointing. Our verse, our anchor verse is found in Psalm 92 verse 10. It declares, but my horn, my emblem of strength and power, you have exalted like that of a wild ox. I am anointed with fresh oil for your service. And so we see David declares boldly here that he is anointed with fresh oil. And I want to boldly declare that over your life this morning, that you are anointed with fresh oil in this season, in this dispensation, and for what God wants to do in and through your life. How, how amazing is that family that you know that you know that you have fresh oil so that you can serve the purposes of God in Jesus name. Now, when we start with understanding the anointing, let's go to the Old Testament and start there and then we'll navigate our way into the New Testament. And so when you look at the Old Testament, God was a very, very worked very interestingly in the Old Testament uh, in that only the kings, only the priests, and only the prophets were anointed and they were the only ones that were allowed to receive a download of the anointing and so God worked through the king God worked through the priest and God worked through the prophet and, and they were God's mouthpiece on the earth God would communicate through those uh, three different officers king priest and prophet when you come into the New Testament What's interesting to find is that Jesus operated in all three offices. Jesus was king. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus is priest. The Bible says he's the high priest that's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And Jesus was also prophet. The Bible declares of Jesus that a prophet has no honor in his own town or amongst his own people. And so we see that Jesus, when you study the Gospels, he operated in all three offices. He operated as king, operated as priest, and he operated as prophet. Now, when you look at the New Testament, what we begin to see then is that it is completely different to the old. In that, in the New Testament, every Christian has a right to partake and to operate in the anointing. Why is that? It's because Jesus, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, Jesus dwells in your heart. And because Jesus operated in all three of those offices, because you have received him in your heart and in your spirit as your Lord and your Savior, you are qualified to operate as prophet, as priest, and as king in your own life. And so this new dispensation, every Christian has the authority, has the right to receive the anointing and operate in the anointing. However, God has also selected uh, what we call ascension gift ministers. And these ascension gift ministers, prophets, priests, and kings are also given to the body of Christ that they too can administer and can release the anointing. And so it's important for us to understand that you qualify family, you qualify to access and operate the anointing because of what Jesus did on Calvary. Jesus qualified you to walk and operate in the anointing. And so we want to start right from from grassroots levels family and we want to take this teaching line upon line and precept upon precept so that you can have a clear understanding of how you can operate the anointing and so the first principle we want to look at is number one we want to look at the source 
of the anointing. Now, we know that God is the source of all things. The Bible says, in him was life, and the life was the light of all men. And so, God is light, and God is life. And so, the source of life, we know that it derives from God. However, God does use channels. And when you study it in this new dispensation, in the new covenant, there are three key channels that God uses to disperse or to release his anointing. And so the first channel that God uses is the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Holy Spirit is also known as the spirit of anointing. And if you got me to Luke uh, chapter 4, reading verses 18, the Bible declares, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, and to sit at liberty those who are oppressed. And so we see clearly here that the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus. The Spirit of God activated Jesus and was the source of life for Jesus to go about doing public ministry. And so the first thing we find here is that number one, the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is a vehicle that God uses to release or manifest the anointing. The second vehicle that we find uh, that God uses, number two, is the Word of God. The Bible teaches in Mark 16 verse 20, and the apostles went out announcing the good news everywhere. The good news is the word of God. As the Lord himself consistently worked with them, validating the message they preached with miracle signs that accompanied them. And so we see, secondly, the second vehicle that God uses to release his anointing, to manifest his anointing, is the Word of God. The Word of God is a powerful, powerful weapon that God has given us. But in the Word is the anointing. And when we begin to understand that as we exercise the Word, proclaim the Word, decree the Word, as we do it effectively, in the Word is the anointing. And as we exercise it effectively, we release the anointing. And the anointing begins to work mightily on our behalf. The third source that God uses or vehicle that God uses is ascension gift ministers. And this is so important for you to understand. Now, when you look at Ephesians 4 verse 11, the Bible declares, And he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And so we see clearly here that God has earmarked or God has selected some ascension gift ministers and God has anointed them in the office for ministry so that they can disperse, they can release, they can manifest the anointing. And so family, God is the source, but God uses three key vehicles that can distribute, disperse, or minister this anointing. And that is number one, the Holy Spirit. Number two, the Word of God. And number three, God also uses ascension gift ministers. Let's move on and let's ask the question, what is now the purpose for this anointing? Because it's imperative for us to understand the purpose for the anointing. And, and when you study in the Bible, the purpose for the anointing is twofold. The first purpose for the anointing is to activate the believer. And if you got me in your Bibles to Luke 4 verse 18, the Bible declares, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Jesus understood that if he wanted to operate in the divine will of the Father, then he has to be activated by the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit will Activate the anointing upon your life. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of the anointing will activate your dreams and your desires and your goals 
and your plans, family. And so we must understand that this, this anointing is to activate. This anointing is to call those things that be not as though they were. This anointing is that even when uh, men, men, man says that this is, it's over, it's finished, it's, it's dead, there's nothing more that can be done. God declares that if you speak faith and release the anointing of the living God, then you will cause an activation. You will reverse the curse. You will reverse the spur of death in Jesus' name. And you will release life into that situation or that circumstance or that relationship. And so it becomes imperative for us to understand then that the anointing, the first purpose of the anointing is to activate. I declare this morning for those that are listening, those that are watching, that God is going to activate you. We are in a new season and we are in a new day and God is about activating your dream and activating your desires. I speak over our local church that God will activate areas of our church that there will be a greater demonstration of God's anointing in Jesus name. The second area that God or a second purpose for the anointing is not only for God to activate but number two God wants to promote you. Now, when we look at life, we, we have our dreams and we have our desires and we journey towards becoming all that God would have us be. But along the journey, we find obstacles, we find challenges, we find limitations, we find ceilings and at times it almost feels as though we just don't have what it takes to get to the next level. We don't have what it takes to overcome the enemy. We don't have what it takes to become all that God would have us be. Family, that's why the anointing is given to you and to me. The Bible teaches in Isaiah 10, 27, it declares, it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. A synonym for the word yoke means bondage or enslavement. And so when we begin to understand the purpose of this anointing, that at times the enemy wants to enslave us on a certain level. At times the enemy wants to keep us in bondage and not release us into the dispensation or the level or the dimension that God has for us. But I declare that there is an anointing that's being released this morning over your life and into different areas of your life and this anointing is to destroy the yoke break the yoke uh, obliterate the yoke so that you can walk in freedom so family you must understand that not only does the anointing activate your dream but as you journey on fulfilling your dream or becoming all that god would have you be you're going to find obstacles you're going to find the enemy and the devil attacking you but you need to stand strong and stand sure and know that God will release an anointing as you speak the word of faith, as you decree and declare over your situation. That anointing, it will destroy that yoke. It will destroy that ceiling. It will destroy that limitation. And it will propel you into that which God has. I declare that over your life. That which has been holding you back. That which has been limiting you. Amen. God's heart. And God's desire is to break that yoke, release the anointing, to break and destroy that yoke so you can live on the level that God has designed for you in Jesus' name. And so family, we then begin to see that the purpose of the anointing is so important. Now this morning, we want to look at spiritual experiences in the anointing because there are certain experiences that we can encounter in the anointing and when we encounter these experiences it's for for the purpose of bringing us into our fullness now before we go into those principles let's look at some scripture the bible says in second corinthians 1 verse 21 it says now he who establishes us with you in christ and has anointed us in god has also sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee and so this anointing, the spirit of anointing that God has given into your heart, it's a guarantee that you will overcome. You will 
rule, you will reign and you will become all that God would have you be. 1 John 2 verse 20, the Bible declares, but the Holy One has anointed you and, will, and you know all the truth. And you know all the truth. And so family, you have to understand that God has given you this anointing. And this anointing has the ability to reveal the truth of God's word to you. 1 John 2 verse 27 declares, But the wonderful anointing we have received from God is so much greater than their deception and now lives in you. There's no need for anyone to keep teaching you. His anointing teaches you all that you need to know, for it will lead you into truth, not a counterfeit. So just as the anointing has taught you, remain in him. And so we see this anointing has the ability to teach you all things. And so family, there are times where your pastor cannot come to your aid. There are times where your leaders cannot come to your aid. But if there's one sure thing that you do have, is that you do have the anointing of God in Jesus name. And so you must understand that God has given you this anointing, the spirit of anointing. It resides on you and in you. Now the two encounters that we have, the two experiences that we have. Number one, the first experience we have with the anointing is the new birth. And the new birth is so important for us. The Bible declares in John uh, 4 verse 14. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And so this is the first encounter. Jesus is declaring that there's, there's a water. It's the word of God. It's the spirit spirit of anointing that God will give us and this this anointing that Jesus will release into us it is it will swell up within us and it will cause rivers of living water to flow out of us family you must understand that this anointing is so powerful that one river is for your family another river is for your health another river is for your relationships another river is for your finances and so within you, there are rivers of living waters that are waiting to flow from within in Jesus name. John 7 verse 38 declares, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Can you see family? There are rivers of living water that is locked up in your spirit. And John 14 verse 16 declares, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. And so when you deal with the, the new birth experience, you begin to see that the new birth experience is to benefit the believer. This experience is for your benefit. Remember when we defined uh, Psalm 92, where the Bible says for your, for your service, God Firstly, wants to serve you the promises of God. God firstly wants every area of your life to be blessed. And so we see these rivers, a river that of anointing that flows into my marriage, a river of anointing that flows into my family, a river of anointing that flows over my body and brings health and wholeness, a river of anointing that flows into my finances. And so God's desire, this new birth experience, it's for you. It's for you to be blessed. It's for you to be empowered. It's for you to come into your fullness in Jesus' name. But then there's a, a second experience that God would have us, family. And that experience is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that is so important for us to understand. If you go in your Bible to Acts chapter 1, reading verse 8, it declares, But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria and to the end of the earth. And so we see here very clearly that the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit here, the Bible says, and you will become witnesses. And so this is not for you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is for others, is that God will make you a distribution center. God will make you a channel of blessing that he can use to bless others. But you see, family, we can only do that 
when we have been fully baptized by the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not just a one-off experience but it's an ongoing experience that you have with God in the Spirit in your prayer time in your quiet time with God and God continually baptizes you fills you on the inside with the Holy Spirit that as you begin to serve others there's an outflow from within you that can be a tremendous blessing to others and so I want to begin to draw this to a close this morning and I want to deal with the concept of life in the anointing how amazing is that God has designed us to live a life in the anointing the Bible teaches in 2nd Corinthians 5 17 any man be in Christ the word in and Christ are two powerful words the word in speaks of environment any man be in the environment the word Christ is the anointed one with his anointing and so it declares any man or woman be in the environment of the anointed one with his anointing I tell you family when we understand that now how do we qualify we don't qualify because of the of anything that we have done we qualify because that which Christ did on Calvary and more than that we know that we have this environment and we live in this environment in our spirits because Christ lives on the inside of you and of me and so family you must understand that this anointing then is the very breath of who I am it's the very life the essence of who I am this anointing because I live and I reside in the anointing of Christ in Jesus name look at the Bible declares in Romans 8 verse 16 the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God and if children then as heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if indeed we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together and so we see here that God himself declares not we're not just heirs of God but we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ why because the life of the anointing is a part of who I am 24 7 the Bible declares in Romans um, chapter 8 verse 14 for as many as are led by the Spirit by the anointing of God they are the sons of God you are led by the anointing because the anointing is flooded and full in your heart in Jesus name and in John 14 verse 17 the Bible declares the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you and so family God has designed your life and designed your spiritual makeup that the Holy Spirit can dwell in you that the spirit of anointing of Christ that it dwells and remains in you 24 7 and so you must know that you are an unstoppable force when God works through you God works mightily through your life and God will perform the exploits because of the anointing that's in your life now let's close with these thoughts the Holy Spirit number one family he is your teacher and as a teacher he wants to teach you the principles the precepts the laws of Christ the Bible teaches in John 15 26 it declares there but when the comforter counselor helper advocate intercessor strengthener standby comes who I will send to you from the Father the spirit of truth who comes proceeds from the Father he himself will testify regarding me and so we see that the spirit of truth the teacher will begin to teach us all truth that we may have an understanding of who this God is that we may have an understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus so that we know who we are we know whose we are and we know what we call to do the Bible teaches in John 16 verses 31 it says but when the truth giving spirit comes he will unveil the reality of every truth within you and so we see that God's desire is to unpack and unveil and release the truth of God's Word into your spirit man and then lastly 1 John 2 verse 20 declares but you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things 
all truth and all knowledge resides in the anointing. And God's desire, family, is to release that knowledge and that truth through the spirit of the anointing in Jesus' name. And then lastly, as we close, the second thing that God wants to release through your encounters and your experiences with God is that not only does God want to release knowledge, but God wants to release revelation, family. And revelation is on a higher level than knowledge. Revelation, the Bible, when you understand the concept of revelation, is that the veil is being removed. And, and, and that in seeing, you may see. The Bible, Paul teaches that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know the hope of God's calling on your life. And so knowledge is wonderful. But we have to go to the next level where we can trust God for revelation knowledge, where we see the clear blueprint, where we see the clear strategy family. And when we do that, I tell you, man, you'll be amazed at what God will do in and through our lives. The Bible teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 9, it declares it. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor is it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. And so we see, family, that God, his desire as we spend time in his word and spend time in the spirit of anointing, God's desire is to reveal the word of God. And when, we, when he reveals the word, he, opens up the anointing. You see, when you begin to understand the concept of anointing, the Bible declares that the anointing is, is an ointment that must be rubbed in. And so what does that mean? It means then that we cannot just glance over the word. We have to study the word. We have to look at the Hebrew meaning, the Greek meaning, the Latin meaning. We have to go into concordances. We have to go into some of these... Uh, um, uh, and cross-reference vines etc and as we do a, an extensive study on a certain subject or even a certain word we begin to get a fuller understanding a bigger picture of what God is trying to reveal to us and as we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal the knowledge of God reveal the understanding of God and reveal the Word of God to us and so this morning, family, 1 John 2.20, and I close with this thought. The Bible says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. What is critical is your relationship with God. And as you, you develop your relationship with God, God begins to reveal His Word, reveal revelation, knowledge and understanding. And so how do I develop a relationship with God? God and His Word are one. And so as I allow the Holy Spirit to lead me in His Word, His Word will begin to open up my understanding and I can begin to see a clear blueprint for what God has for me. And so this morning, that's my prayer for you. That as you go into this week, we've declared this is a new season. This is a new day. There's a fresh anointing that God's going to do some amazing things. But as we pray over you, this is my desire that God's heart and God's desire will begin to manifest in and through your life something supernatural that you will have a clear understanding of his word that as you apply it effectively, it will work and will yield fruit in Jesus name. Receive this prayer. Father, as I stretch forth my hands to every family member, I now command blessings. I declare that this anointing will break every yoke. This anointing will remove every limitation. I declare that this anointing will activate your people and bring purpose to their life, that they may accomplish the great things that you have for them. Lord, I pray that as they look to you, revelation knowledge, wisdom, and understanding will be their portion in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Oh